Welcome to the season finale of season one here at Everton. We currently sit in 11th place in the division, but there is still positions to be earned in the league and as a result, more money to be earned for our transfer budget for season two. So it is important that we get good results today. We've got two home games against Ipswich and Southampton, which we're going to sim, and then three played games, which are Fulham, Chelsea, and I think Crystal... No, Newcastle. Newcastle. Southampton, Chelsea, Newcastle, Fulham and Ipswich. So we'll start by seeing Ipswich, then we'll play the next two. Sim Southampton and then play Newcastle away from home on the final day to try and finish as high as potentially eighth in the table. Fulham are one of the sides above us in the league that we're trying to catch. And a win in this opening match day against Ipswich here would go a long way in helping us trying to get that position. And we should do certainly get a victory here and we do by two goals to one. Although the two looks quite misplaced there. Calvert-Lewin with an 89th minute winner after Connor Chaplin equalised just five minutes from time. Jack Harrison had given us a 1-0 lead. So far, so good. And Fulham drew there as well. So that's the side above us dropping points. And now it's time to go and play them and hopefully make them drop some more. Saying thank you to those of you on the board behind me for your continued support. Joshua and Ryan up there. RJ, my nanic's up there as well. And in his comment, he said, remember the 24th as a date of October, which is going to be Friday, I think, this week. That's 10 years since my nanic started watching the content on the channel. So thank you for a decade's worth of support, my man. That's phenomenal. Hopefully we can celebrate it by beating Fulham and then everybody else we play today. 4-2-3-1 for Fulham. We're right behind him in the league now. Burnt Leno in goal. Anthony Robinson, Calvin Massey, Joachim Anderson and Kenny Tetter. Tom Kenny, Harrison Reid, Smithrow, Pereira, Ruobi and Rodrigo Muniz up top for them. Who's half decent in real life. Had a very good season last year. Raul Jimenez has kind of been the man for them this year at IRL uh, Fulham. I think Muniz kind of broke into the scene as Jimenez was injured last year. Wait and see what Fulham can do here. They've had a decent season. They are above us in the table by one place. What the points tally looks like, I'm not sure. But we'd very much like to beat them here. And if we do, we should be able to get ourselves above them by the end of the season if we can get results in our other games. Obviously, Chelsea and Newcastle are certainly not shoo-ins for results at all. But we should be good enough to challenge on both fronts. Timmy Garner. Look for Gift Orban from range. Good save by Burnt Lemo. Burnt Lemo. Burnt Leno. Oh, I'm sure what's Bob's doing there. Orban! Good save by Leno again. Maybe I should have power shot that one as well. Or lace shot that one rather than trying to place it in the corner. I don't know. Burnt Leno. Burnt Leno. Gift Orban looks likely to be a player that we signed permanently in the summer. He's certainly made an impression here in his loan spell. Probably the only loanee that I'm considering at this stage, but... We'll, uh, we'll give you guys a bit... Oh, that was terrible defending chess. Give you guys a bit... Yeah, I deservedly go 1-0 down. Give you guys a bit of a say as to whether any of the other loanies stay or not. Gift or bands are definite, yes. Everyone else is a bit up in the air. And I need to improve because I'm too busy going... And not busy enough going fucking stop them scoring. Oh, I just didn't quite time the turn right. Otherwise, I'd have definitely beaten the man. Jimmy Garner... It's not a great pass. Go all the way out to Jack Harrison here. He's got nothing in the middle to aim for now other than the arriving Dominic Calvert-Lewin who arrives and draws the save out of Leno. We've had more chances than Fulham. They've got more goals than me. Well in Iwobi. Bob. Please. Ugh. Gift. Bury it. Good lad. We're level. I made a mistake that gave them the goal. They've made a mistake that gave me possession that led to the goal. Dankeschön. Key, key, key from Dominic Calvert-Lewin there. Really important reach and toe. And good finish. Tidy finish. Good lad. Oh, nice little one-two. Completely sold me. Andreas Pereira, strike. Held well. Bowl it quickly, looking for Gift. And Harrison. And Mongler. And Gift. Oh, good first turn, but there just happened to be an extra man. They're waiting to take it off him. 
What? What is that animation from Jimmy Garner there? He's just ducked under the ball. Emil Smith Rowe. That's a foul. He'll play on. The bloody score as well. What is Jimmy? Whatever. 2 1. And their defensive line have gone walkabouts. Oh, what's Calvin Bassey doing all the way back there? That was really weird. Dominic Calvert Lewin turns brilliantly. And, oh my God, off the line. Cleared away, off the line. Christ knows what Calvin Bassey's doing, just chilling 40 yards behind the play. Oh, that's supposed to be a stand tackle. All right, still 2-1 Fulham then. Kenny Tetta going off for them. Looking for Bob. Finding Bob. Looking for Calvert-Lewin. Finding Calvert-Lewin. Buries it brilliantly. Now that is what I want from him more often. He doesn't do it enough. Oscar Bob with the whip. Dominic Calvert-Lewin with the headed effort that was borderline offside, I thought, actually. But that's an excellent goal. Under significant pressure from calvert -Bassi. He's literally got his arm around him as he's heading that down. That's an unbelievable goal. Genuinely, really good from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We have 11 minutes to find a winner. It opened up. There was space to sort bollocks. I'm going for it. Two minutes added on. If we win this header, we might have another chance. We've won the header. We might have another chance. Here comes Jimmy Garner. Oh! There's Harrison Reed. Okay, we won't have another chance. A 2-2 draw! A 2-2 draw at Craven Cottage. Doesn't really help either side, that. What's been pointed out to me in my chat, though, is that we do have some money remaining this season that we could spend now on Thank Gift Orban, and that would save us having to spend any of our next season's budget on Gift Orban, because I can't guarantee that what we've got left this season gets carried over in its entirety to next season. At present... I have 18 million in my budget. And say, for example, we were going to get given 40 next year, I can't guarantee that I'd get 58. So I might as well just spend it now, right? I think I'm going to spend it now. He's more, exp more expensive than I thought. But as a result, would they be interested in just a straight Beto swap? You want Beto? No, they want Tarkovsky. I think I'm all right with that. I think I'm all right with that. Tarkovsky's absolutely replaceable next year. And we, of course, have Aidan O'Brien, who can fill that role already. I'm all right with that. I'm very much all right with that. Give Dorban, would you like to come and sign for me, mate? What do you want a week at the minute? £31,500. We can afford that. We can very much afford that. Gift! You are a... I was on 31. Sorry, 33. Because one he was on. I'm confusing. Important. Sure. Not a problem. It's not the realistic RTG. Five years. Five years! Who are we? Chelsea? Well, no, if we were Chelsea, we'd love him bloody nine. Uh, no release clause is fine by me. Do you want... Ah, he's not going to give me what he wants a week. How about a little bit, a little bit more than what you're currently on? Lovely! Gift swap for James Tarkovsky and £4 million. Now that is a win. Chelsea with a 4-2-3-1 at the bridge. Robert Sanchez in goal. Chilwell for Fana, Barry, Shili, Reese, James, Lavia and Caicedo. Sancho, Palmer, Neto and Jackson. All right. I've made a couple of changes. Enforced through lack of stamina. But hopefully... We can still do something against Chelsea. Did we? I can't remember what the result was last time we played Chelsea. I think we got a draw. I know we drew nil-nil with Man City. I can't remember whether we actually got a decent result against Chelsea or not. You guys will remember better than me. I'm sure someone in live chat will remember in the moment. But right now, we don't care what the previous result was. We want to know what this result will be. And hopefully, we'll see you, Romeo. Hopefully, it will be a positive one for us. Is Neto. Nice ball through to Nicholas Jackson. Hello. 
back to Pedro. Cole Palmer. I know you're Cole Palmer, but there's no need to just do a random Rabona after five minutes, Cole. It kind of takes the piss out of us. Harrison. And D.I. Oh my god, Beto. Yep. Yep. Yep, that's better, all right. That's why I wanted to swap him for Gift Orban. Oh my god. Still nil-nil! Where you going, Pedro? Oh. Over there, he says. Nicholas Jackson just doing a casual pirouette on the spot. How? How? What is, what is Jaden Sancho on? How's he done that, then? Corner Chelsea. It's a bit of pressure here at Stamford Bridge. Sancho delivers. And Patterson heads away. Resonator. Sobias again. In there. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Yes, but Beto, Danny Ceballos, deflected. Deflected off Beto, who was offside. Honestly, I cannot sell this man quickly enough. Drill it. As you touch. Not bad, yes, but. Not bad, yes, but. Drawn Reese James in. Drawn Reese James in again. Yes, but Lindstrom. Get yourself in the box, Beto, lad. Knock it down, Beto, lad. No, the ball, not yourself, you big lump. Oh, my God. Get that man out of this football club. Win this, Jake. Well up, lad. Mongola quickly forward. And Ceballos. Oh, God, there's nowhere to go. This for Harrison, though. Oh, Beto. You're so bad. You're so bad. You are so bad. He was offside as well. Maybe not. Kill him. I can't get near him. Cole Palmer is just going to take it around everyone. Yeah, it's going to be nil-nil. What? 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 Oh, panic over. I thought they were going to get a free kick there. I was waiting for a Cole Palmer against Brighton special. All right. Well, it's not a defeat against Chelsea like it was last time against 10 men. Their fans aren't happy with it. Our fans probably are happy with not losing, but at this stage of the season when we need points to earn money for next year, I'm not sure whether that's enough. We've got... Oh, Fresnader's apparently... Uh, I'll downplay it. Fresnader's apparently uh, complacent now, which is not necessarily a good thing, is it? I'm going to mean his stats are a bit lower. We've got 18th place ready for relegation Southampton next. I know, I know... I know I don't want any of them. Uh, I've got money left still. So I don't know whether to spend that on Fresneda now or wait till next season or even the season after that for Fresneda because we don't have to buy him. I don't have to spend the money because he's got a two year loan. So I might I might still just continue to wait for Fresneda. I know. Actually, mm, Oscar Bob. I'd be, I'd be tempted by Oscar Bob, genuinely. Uh, what's he worth? Oscar Bob. Eight. Ugh. I don't know whether I'd want to spend ten plus on him, if I'm honest. I think I'd probably rather buy someone else. I'd probably rather buy someone else that's better. But... Another loan next year, I certainly would be open to. Right. Um, a sim against the Saints. Dub! Oh, yeah. 3-0. Lovely. Ghana, Undi and Undi 3-0 win. Fantastic. Fulham lost by two goals to nil there as well. We're 10th in league. We've 11th place. Newcastle next. Although they've got a game... Oh, to be fair, their game in hand. They still can't catch me. I could still finish 8th if West Ham lose their game in hand. Is that game in hand against Newcastle? West Ham, West Ham, West Ham. Where are you, lads? Forest. Uh, right. Okay. So, we've got quite a bit that could be available on the final day. You email from the Everton board. What do you want now? We'll wait and see what the, what the league table looks like. Message from Beto. You don't want to be talking to me, mate. You've been playing pretty well, have you? I'll bite my tongue, but it, if, you, if you've not got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. 
and I've got nothing nice to say to him. Duncan Patterson wants to leave. Uh, be tempted to let him leave, actually. The diving is low. That has been fixed with the latest patch, as has the heading of the outfield players as well, which is there as t at 12, and the defensive awareness as well. Defensive awareness on defenders is low. That's been fixed too. So, thanks, EA. At the minute, 68 to 72 potential. Just get in the bin, mate. Let's have a look and see what the league table looks like here on the final day of the Premier League season. Then We know the title was Manchester City's a long time ago. 91 points there are at the moment. Uh, Chelsea in fifth can finish inside the top four. Tottenham have Brighton at home. Chelsea have Forest away. West Ham... Uh, West Ham beat Forest there, didn't they, by three goals to two. We can't finish eighth. We can finish ninth, though. And an extra one place be worth a few million, certainly. So, who Fulham got? Fulham have Manchester City at home. Good luck. We, to be fair, Newcastle. It's not exactly an easy game at St. James's Park, is it? So, good luck to me, too. At the bottom end of the table, Bournemouth are long gone. Ipswich, Ipswich can save themselves. Ipswich, oh, Ipswich have West Ham. Which is not an easy game. But it is at home. So there's a chance. I've got an itch here. That won't go away. Southampton have Arsenal at home. Which is not going to be straightforward at all. And Leicester have Bournemouth. Who are already relegated. So Leicester favourites to stay up then. I don't know. Is there anyone from Southampton, Ipswich or Bournemouth really. That we'd consider poaching for next season either. If they went down. Not off the top of my head anyway. Would be worth a look. But let's give a new permanent signing... Give Dorban the start. Um, yeah, let's give Bob the start as well. Why not? Mongo's been decent. Jimmy Garner's been decent. But let's give Danny Ceballos a game in there as well. Because I've really enjoyed Danny Ceballos. It, we can definitely do better in terms of quality. Whether we could do much better in terms of value, I don't know. I'm not sure what he's valued at. But as an, a, an, an ageing, an older player, he'd be a cheaper option. He's decent, but we can do better. But again, it depends on how much money we've got, doesn't it? Because I don't think we're going to be flush next season. But we should have enough. Let's go and play Newcastle. Newcastle in a 4-3-3. Alexander Isak was a monster last time we played them. Nick Pope, Lewis Hall, Sven Botman, Fabian Scher, and Tino Livramento. Longstaff, Guimaraes, and Miley. Barnes, Almirol, and Isak. On the bench then, Sandro Tonali. All right. Fair enough. I mean, it's still probably going to... Dominic! That's not great, pal. Lovely start to the game. Miguel Amaron tearing me apart. Oh, my God. Please don't. Thank you, James Tarkovsky, even though you're not going to be here next year. Thank you, James Tarkovsky, even though you're not going to be here next year. Lindstrom. Ping! Not quite the ping I was after. I went a bit closer to Oscar, if I'm honest. Win that. Oral. I think he used a hand. No, he didn't. Orban. Cover Lewin. Where's the ball? There it is. Shoot! Oh my god! Dominic, are you serious? Nicky Almond with a spinner Rooney. Oh, see ya. Did it twice. Is he on the side? Have you heard of defending, lads? Because I'd like you to do some. Miley, long staff. Ah, Isak. Barnes was off, I think. Good. Yeah. Finally. Something goes our way from the linesman. Almiron. Almigon, apparently. Thank you. One Lindstrom. Ref! Get him off the pitch! Send him home now. It's, it's got to be. It is. What is he doing? Talk about rush of blood to the head. You can complain as much as you like, Mr. Howe. It's a clear red card challenge. Lindstrom through the gap. Calvin Lewin looks to spin Fabian Scher. Gift inside and onside and can't score. Win that. It's nicely done. Oh, it's even better. Harvey Barnes. Oh, is he onside? 
Yes. The ten men lead. Harvey Barnes links up beautifully with a teammate. Lays it out wide. Gets it back again. And tucked home centrally. Lovely defensive line. By the looks of things. Last action of the half as well. Fantabulous. Good. Well, we can't finish any lower than 10th. But I, I did I did want to finish 9th if we could. Or as high as possible. Oh, I was trying to get around the man. Because so then bobbing behind. Alright, half time at 1-0 down then. Well in, Jimmy. No clean sheet for Tarkovsky on... Final performance for the club, unfortunately. Looking for Dwight McNeil. And if Cabot Lewin can find the space and can stay on side, he might have a chance. Orban, lift it. Calvert Lewin, straight at Pope. Tino's dead. Dwight McNeil's not got much left either. Oh, God, Sandra Tonali's come from the blind side. I've tried so hard to score against Newcastle today, and I just can't do it. Great ball. Give Dorban. No, oh, can't do it. Nick Pope is just too good. Every, um, you can see how locked in I am. Trying to score. It's just impossible to do so against this Newcastle side, apparently. Tonali and Isak. How's he done that? Get out. Oh, come on. He's missed anyway. You imagine. Corner. They made a change. Livermento off. Niklas Sula on. Physical presence. No pace. Bring that down, Dwight. Run, Dwight. Sprint, mate. Gifts away. It's the stupid Jan that's with him. It's the stupid Jan that's got it. Libinek. Of all the people on the pitch, he's probably the only one that would have gotten there first. Gift. Oh, bloody Niklas Sula. Two minutes added on. It's going to be a 1-0 defeat to a 10-man Newcastle. We lost 1-0 to a 10-man Chelsea earlier on in the season. And it's going to happen again. I've done all but score in this, in this game. Literally everything but. Oh, man. Almost every season, in every save we do, has a lot to play for on the final season finale, on the final day, even, of the season. And we would have done if we hadn't lost to that Nottingham Forest goal in the last episode. Unfortunately, we did. Ipswich lose. They're down. Leicester, I didn't see... Less, Bournemouth were already gone. Then it was Ipswich and Southampton, right? Thanks, Ipswich and Southampton. And then Leicester were trying to survive. So, how did the season end? Let's have a quick look then. Uh, standings. In the top four, it was Chelsea that pipped Arsenal on the final day. They were able to get themselves in there. Arsenal, on the final match day of the season... 1-3-2 against Southampton, but Chelsea won 2-1 against uh, Nottingham Forest. And with their game in hand that they were able to get points in as well. Unfortunately for uh, for Arsenal, they weren't able to get themselves into the top four. Spurs finished sixth as well, behind Arsenal on goal difference. Arsenal fans will love that. Spurs in sixth, two points off second. That really is tough to take. Villa seventh, West Ham eighth, Fulham ninth and ourselves in tenth. Not sure how much money we'll get from that. We could have won the game against Newcastle. Or even drawn the game against Newcastle. We might have finished. I think we would have needed to have won it to finish above Fulham in ninth. Uh, Southampton, Ipswich and Bournemouth are down. Southampton lost to the Arsenal. Uh, Ipswich lost to West Ham. And Leicester, Leicester had Bournemouth, didn't they? And they drew 1-1. City beat Fulham by a goal to nil. Oh, buggery, buggery, buggery. Well... What else happens in all the other competitions then? Let's have a look. Uh, Liverpool won the FA Cup over Forest. To be honest, we probably would have lost the final to Liverpool anyway, wouldn't we? In all honesty. 
Uh, they won the Carabao Cup as well. All right, domestic cup double for Liverpool. That's the pre-season tournament. The Champions League was won by... No, it's the UEFA Super Cup. Champions League final hasn't yet been played, Ches. So you need to advance a few days yet. Let's advance a little while then. And then we'll have a full season roundup. So your Champions League winner was Paris Saint-Germain by two goals to one over Atletico Madrid. Real Sociedad win in the Europa League over Frankfurt. And in the Europa Conference League was Chelsea over Panathinaikos. Not that Chelsea really care that much because they'll be in the Champions League next year, and that, of course, would have only earned them a Europa League spot. Fair play to them, though. Got the job done. Uh, player stats, please. Well, you probably could have guessed it. Top goal scorer in the league, Erling Haaland with 32. You wouldn't have put Luis Diaz second, though, nor Nico Jackson third, or Paul Onoachu fourth, level with Gabby Jesus. Onoachu, 20 goals. Phone with 19, he sat. Cunha, where's our first player? Calvert-Lewin with 14. I don't know what to do with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. It depends what he's worth, I guess. Salah only 11 goals. Assist-wise, Havertz with 10. Erling with 10 as well. What a season for him. Grealish with 8. Our most creative player was... Jack Harrison with 6. Fair enough, Jack. Certainly couldn't do better than him with regards uh, opportunities in the market for the summer for a winger. Pickers only one behind the joint Golden Glove winners, Edison and Robert Sanchez. So fair enough. Definitely no qualms about having Jordan Pickford as my number one goalkeeper next season whatsoever. Quite happy with that. With regards other leagues, we'll have a look and see who's going to join us from the championship. Coming up from the league below will be Leeds and Burnley. And one of Sheffield United, Hull, Middlesbrough and Luton. Uh, going down from the championship will be Plymouth and Oxford and Portsmouth. The three sides that came up last year. No, Plymouth were up the year before. Derby went up last year. And Derby survive. Sorry, Plymouth, but you've gone down now. Promoted from League One to the Championship of Bolton and Huddersfield. And one of Birmingham, Reading, Lincoln and Exeter. What? Oh, God. 11th in real life. I would bite your, not arm, your entire torso off to get Cambridge United 11th in League One this year in real life. Relegated Crawley, who were recently promoted. Stockport, who were recently promoted. Mansfield, who were recently promoted. And Burton, who've been flirting with relegation for about eight years in a bloody row. Wrexham, the other promoted side, finished 14th in the end. Uh, I didn't want to back all the way out, thank you. Press the wrong button there, didn't I? Well done, Ches. In League 2, coming up will be Bradford, Walsall and MK Dons. And one of Gillingham, Notts County, Carlisle and Port Vale. And if it were on the game, the National League would now have Newport County and Grimsby Town in it. The Women's Super League was won by Manchester City. League <clears throat> was won by PSG, Nice in second, Monaco third and Marseille fourth, Lyon only seventh, Lille only eighth. Women's was won by PSG as well. In the uh, female Bundesliga, it's Bayern Munich. In the male Bundesliga, it's Leverkusen. Oh, the Chabi Alonso, back-to-back -back years, 78 points to 74. Frankfurt third, Dortmund fifth, Leipzig fifth. Uh, Sorry, Dortmund, yeah, Dortmund fourth, Leipzig fifth. Fifth only for Leipzig. In the Eredivisie, Eredivisie. In the Serie A, it's Juventus by seven points from Napoli. Inter third, Milan fourth. Roma only seventh, poor from them. Speaking of the Eredivisie, Ajax by 11 points. In Portugal, Porto by three points from Sporting. Then Benfica in third, the top three. Rather predictable, Braga being in fourth is probably quite predictable as well, to be honest. In SPL, ooh, Rangers third is not predictable. Celtic up top. In La Liga, Atletico from Athletic Club. Real Madrid third, Barcelona fourth. Go on, Athletic Club. Only three points off the title. Fair play. And in the women's MLS, I, MLS is hard to tell, isn't it? Because there's, I mean, that's only showing me is that going to show me the overall MLS table with everybody from each conference in it is, isn't it? Not really that asked anyway. And to be honest, the competition is still ongoing, isn't it? So uh, with regards, our players. In the Youth Academy, there's some potential, but no one's really any good apart from Blumfist, who's 65. So I probably will call him up to the senior team and we'll look to loan him out next year. Garrett, I could do the same with, so why not? The rest are not great at the moment, but we'll see what happens. With regards, our own squad. Pleased with most players. Pickford's up to 84, which is good. Uh, Joel Virginia 
has grown, but he's leaving us, as is Asmir Begovic. Uh, I'm going to be looking for a backup goalkeeper next year, to be completely honest. Mikolenko at left-back is really good. We will extend that contract probably before the end of the season. Tarkovsky's obviously going to Leon now, but he was solid, but definitely replaceable. Mason Holgate will be some money into the transfer budget for next year when we sell him. Branthwaite's obviously fantastic. Mengi was really good. Jake O'Brien was rock solid as well. Campbell obviously will go out on loan again. Similarly, Hansen will go out on loan next year too. Ashley Young leaves us. Seamus Coleman leaves us. Patterson, Fresneda and Maitland-Niles all battle it out for the first spot at right back. And obviously, whoever isn't first spot at right back is back up on either side. Quite happy with my fullbacks at the minute. Michelengo's really good. Fresneda plays better than a 75-rated player and he's on a two-year loan. I don't have to fulfil the buy clause now, so I'm not going to. Uh, it's... Ishmael, I was going to say that. Idrissa Garnagay is uh, going to Fulham on a free. Tim's up to 73 on loan at West Ham, which is decent. Is it good enough to be in the squad? Maybe. Maybe another loan next year might suit him better. Metcalf will go out on loan again. Blomqvist, we will look to loan, of course. Armstrong will look to loan again. Uh, Danny Ceballos, what's he worth? 15. No, I'm not going to spend 15 million on Danny Ceballos. He's good, but not worth that. Similarly, Mangala was good, but we could probably do better. We could probably sign someone that's slightly lower rated that's going to grow more. But whether they'd be for that sort of fee, I don't know. I'm not paying Danny Sabahs' wages, ultimately, at the end of the day. Uh, Mangala is an option, then, perhaps for next season, depending on what you guys reckon. Jimmy Garner's good. He'll get a contract extension. Uh, no surprises there. You're not very good. Abdullah decore has got a year left on his contract. Two years left on his contract. I don't know. Uh, squad player. Uh, Dwight McNeil, underwhelming. If I'm honest, Dwight McNeil, underwhelming. I would be tempted to cash in. For 18 and a half million plus, I'd really be tempted to cash in. I just don't think... I don't think he's the one. I know Everton fans like him, but... Not feeling it. Yes, Lindstrom broke his toe in the last game of the season. Sorry, Napoli. He goes back to them after his loan spell. Corbett... He's already loan listed. Nobody wants it. Well, some people have bid, but it's not told me about them, so they've expired. Young's out on loan at Antwerp. Jack Harrison's in on loan from uh, Leeds. I mean, we could spend six million ish on Jack Harrison for a squad player, but I don't know whether I would or not. Maybe if there's some money left at the end of the window, who knows? Stanley Mills is just going to go. Some of the youngsters just aren't going to get a look in, I'm afraid. It's not that sort of save. Carey's grown quite well out on loan, actually, to be fair to him. Garrett will go out on loan as well. Uh, Oscar Bob. I like Bob. Three assists in nine Premier League games. It's not bad at all. Some of those substitute appearances as well. What did Jack Harrison get? Two goals, six assists. He was my most creative player, supposedly, Jack Harrison, wasn't he? Oscar Bob is eight mil. Jack Harrison. I mean... I'd probably get Bob over Harrison. But I think I'd like to sign someone that's just better. You're rubbish. Neil Mope will get sold. Some more, a little bit of money. The wages will come in handy. DCL, 28, valued at 12 million. He's my top goal scorer with 14 in 30. It makes sense to keep him. But whether he's the leading man next year, I don't know. Beto can get gone. Undi, I... I like him. 10 goals in 33 games. I like him. Sumiti's grown well. Up to 75. He'll be a squad player next year, I would imagine. Pace of 72. Oh, he's, um, uh, he's kind of a, a younger Beto, it feels like. But usable if we need him. And obviously Gift Orban is going to join us now permanently. So, or has joined us now permanently. He's my guy. And he will grow next year, hopefully very nicely indeed, actually. Especially once we put a development plan on him, which I'll do now. Uh, he's playing as a false nine. 18 weeks as a false nine. We'll get him up. We'll get him up. Ball control can go up as well. His dribbling stats aren't that great. But he just dribbles superbly because of that first touch play style. So we really like Gift Orban. And hopefully he'll be a, a great one for the future. There's going to be a lot of outs in the summer. And how much money we have will determine how many ins come in. We may well be looking for a number of loans again. Or free agents. Maybe a few free agents. We'll see who's available. But for now, that is all for this first season at Everton. 
And this time, we're not going to have the game screw me out of having a second season. So join me tomorrow for episode one of season two of the Everton career mode that will definitely come to you. I think... I I don't know whether I'm enjoying this one more than the Man United one, but I'm not enjoying it any less than the Man United one. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it just as much as the Man United one, and you'll join me for season two. Ta for watching. Next season, we go from 10th, aiming for European football for season three, whether that be via a league finish or again, maybe via an FA Cup or Carabao Cup. We'll wait and see. But for now, that's all for season one. I'll see you later.